I'm Shivani Gupta. I'm obsessed with small to medium businesses growing. As business owners, we take so much risk and we want to make sure it's worth it. I believe one of the best presents you can give yourself as a business owner is to be able to learn how to scale your people, your profit and your processes. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Grow Your Business podcast. I'm your host, Shivani Gupta, and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you some tips around coaching. And why do I want to specifically talk about coaching when we are talking about growing your business? And if you are a small to medium enterprise, um, a business owner that perhaps might be doing anywhere in the range of about $100,000 upwards, is that coaching becomes a very essential skill. Now, even if you don't have any staff, you will have some people in your team, whether they're virtual assistants like I do, or there'll be suppliers that you have to deal with that are really important in terms of being able to work out how to actually coach them and how to maximize that. And this word coaching has been, you know, it's bandied around a lot. So it's really important to understand what it is, what it isn't, and how to maximize some of that. So let's start talking about, you know, where this word coach comes from. I also want to talk a bit about what coaching is and what coaching isn't. I also want to go into, um, you know, what are the key qualities that you look for when you're looking for a coach and what do you want in terms of when you're finding a coach and what do these conversations look like when you're actually having these conversations so that you can create that. So where the word comes from, when you go back to the old Greek mythology or the old Indian mythology, this word comes from where people are looking for some guidance or they've got some questions and they're wanting to run those questions by people and basically have them answered. Now, a really good coach, rather than give them the answers, and I'll probably repeat this a couple of times in this podcast, rather than just give them the answers, one of the things they would do is that they would ask the right questions and help the person that they are coaching, again, whether it's supplier, assistant, or whether you've got many, many staff in terms of how to actually maximise getting them to doing the thinking. And the, the thing when we're doing the coaching conversation, sometimes we're doing that coaching conversation when we want to motivate people to take some action. Sometimes occasionally we're asking them and when we get really stuck, we might need to, you know, step into a little bit of advice in terms of what we do. What we're wanting to always do is make sure that that person is successful as a result of um, having that coaching conversation. Sometimes a coaching conversation is just a bit of direction. Sometimes it's helping them reach people, reach their potential. Sometimes people are just feeling a bit unsupported and they're starting to feel a little bit wobbly and they want, when they're having that coaching conversation, to be able to do that. The main thing that we're trying to do is help people achieve their goal. We want people that when they um, are having that conversation, they've got a goal in terms of getting clarity or getting support or all those advice or all those little things that I've spoken about. And sometimes the person that you're having this coaching conversation with is actually unclear themselves what they're looking for. So the role of a really good business owner acting, wearing the hat of a coach at that time is to help people get clarity on what they're wanting and then give them that little bit of the right questions to get them, pointing them into the right direction and in terms of what we need to do. So now let's talk a little bit about what coaching is and what coaching isn't. Now, um, coaching is not walking through um, the person through absolutely everything tactically. That doesn't mean that you go, this is step one, this is step two, this is step three, this is step four. You know, that is probably more training in terms of what you're doing. So coaching is not taking people through, micromanaging them, making sure that they're going through every single task in your operations and your business that you're trying to do. It also doesn't sometimes require you to be the expert. So, you know, a really good coach, even though it's your business as a business owner, um, you won't know every aspect of your business. So you don't need to understand every in and out of your aspect of your business to be able to ask really good questions and to get clarity and to get them to be able to reach their goal mm -hmm. through that coaching conversation in terms of what they're doing. So it's really important to be able to do that. The third thing is that coaching is not a quick fix. It's not a, okay, right, I'm super busy Here's the conversation, off you go, and you basically go and do that yourself and you leave people to their own devices. They're really looking for some input into helping them achieve that goal, whatever that goal is. It also doesn't mean that, you know, when you're coaching somebody that um, you want to teach them to fish, as the saying goes. You don't want to do the fish fishing for them because then they become dependent. So the idea of coaching is that you're actually teaching people to fish and you're helping people teach them the skills 
get them very clear on what type of fish that they're trying to catch, what uh, resources that they have, what they need, where they might be stuck, rather than actually do that for them. And that analogy works really well when it comes to coaching. And the other thing is that they might find that there's actually a number of things when you unpack what they're really wanting to do. And so you can only do one coaching conversation really on one task at a time to actually work out what you want to do. Now, one of the things that coaching is, now we've talked a lot about what coaching isn't. One of the things that coaching is, is making sure that you are fostering the person taking their own responsibility, um, their own growth, and they're in charge of their own development as well. You want to also make sure that the when you're having that conversation, it's not interrupted by 15 other people. You want to just be able to um, have that. And, and if you're really good at coaching, fantastic. But eventually the coaching doesn't have to be, let's put an hour aside, let's go and sit in an office, let's have it a really structured thing. The more you practice these skills, one of the things you'll find is you'll be able to do that in the corridor. You'll be able to do that on the Zoom form. You'll be able to do that in so many different formats so that you can actually maximise what you need to do. You also make sure that the, the action that that person's going to take or what they've got out of that particular conversation, they're going to write it down and they're going to do it and they're going to commit some time to it. So you want to make sure that whatever you do that's got some time bound and some clear actions or action, one action that's come out of that particular conversation and that coaching as well. And the other thing is that what you want to do is be able to openly give feedback. So, you know, you want to be able to say, look, you know, I noticed that that happened, that happened, is that true? You want to have to be able to open it up to be able to have that conversation rather than feeling like you have to miss out on giving them true feedback. And sometimes I think as business owners, we worry about giving owners, um, giving our staff some of that feedback. We worry how they'll take it. We worry that they might get offended and worst case still that they might leave us. So it's really important to be able to be free and build that rapport and that trust as you start to do more of these coaching conversations as well. Now, the key, key um, qualities that somebody looks for in a coach, in my experience, has been that they're really looking for somebody to share their experience. They're not saying, hey, you have to have done that experience. That experience might be um, something that they've got from a book. That experience might be something that they've got from a colleague. But they're willing to share that experience and those stories to be able to enhance your growth. The second thing that they're going to be looking for is somebody to have really good listening skills. So the person that is a bit stuck and wants this goal achieved really wants a listening ear and you can't keep talking over people. So it's really important whether you've got a post-it note or whether you're just in the corridor to really tune into why, where this person's stuck and what direction and coaching conversation that they actually need. The other thing is that you want to make sure that what they're doing and their business goals, there is an alignment to what they're trying to achieve to the business goals that you might be already set and to make sure that, um, you know, they're not going off on a tangent and other things. And also one of the great things about a great coach is that they're not only willing to give very open feedback, but they're also willing to receive it in terms of how that, um, how that works. So here are some of the conversations that the typical conversation that looks like. And some of you may have come across um, the work on, you know, how do we actually set a goal um, and um, how do we actually look at where we current, our current reality is? We look at what the opportunities are and we do a wrap up. Now, that model is called the GROW model. That model has been around for a good 30 plus years. And um, there's a lot of people that use that. But I remember the first book that I ever read that in by was a book by Max Landsberg. And it was called the Dow TAO of Coaching, and um, it was a fa it's a fantastic book. If you're looking for some of that information more in coaching, or well, please always reach out to me, and I can send you some templates as well in terms of how that works. And the main thing is to get very clear. Firstly, I know you might think, okay, well, this person come to approach me, they must already be very clear on what their goal is. Often not. People are not often clear on what they actually want. So your first part is to get very clear what your goal is. And their goal might be as simple as, um, I'm a little bit stuck in terms of how to do the sales call. Great, we've got a very specific goal here in terms of where that employee might be stuck in terms of being able to do a sales call. The second is we want to actually be able to check what the reality is. Well, have you done any sales calls already? How did they go, right? Have you done any in your previous role if this person's new? So you want to just get a bit of a reality in terms of where they're at right now. Um, and then we want to talk about the opportunities. So the opportunities are things where people would actually um, talk about, well, if we did this call and it was successful, what would that do for the business? How many people would that help? 
What would it do to your own bonuses if there's a bonus structure in place? So you want to get really clear about the opportunities that might be there. And the, the last thing that you would do as a coach is do a wrap up. So does that feel clear to you in terms of what you need to do? When are you going to do it by? It, how will you let me know and let me know how you're going? And if you get stuck, let me know that. So that's an example of a very simple goal that might be. There might be, for example, let's take a personal issue that one of your staff members might be having and you have to help resolve that. So, you know, look, um, I've been really stressed lately. Yes, I can see that. Tell me more about it. Well, one of the things that's happened is my partner's now working full time and we're just trying to work out how to manage our family, for example. So what's the goal, right? Get very, very clear. Do you need some support? Do you want to talk about it? Do you need some flexibility? What is the thing that you're looking for in that conversation? And the person says, actually, one of the things I need is a little bit of flexibility. I don't need to go down to four days a week or whatever, but there are a couple of afternoons that I may need to get the kids. Okay, all right. So what's the current reality of that now? Like, what if you've got some meetings set up? Well, one of the things I could do is I could make sure that I've moved some of my meetings around or I actually don't have any meetings that afternoon. Great. So what are the options and the opportunities that we have? Well, the options is that I make up that time up earlier that day um, or another time. The other is I could go into a part-time, permanent mm -hmm. part-time role and work, you know, a little bit less from that. Um, and so what are some of the opportunities and options that we have? And then the wrap up would be, okay, well, why don't you monitor that for a couple of weeks? I'm so okay. If uh, Tuesday and Thursday, you need to go home earlier to pick up your family and organize all of that. Why don't you just let me know how that will work and then let's get together another two or three weeks and talk about that. So now you might do that conversation anyway, but just knowing what those steps are in the grow model, knowing um, how that coaching conversation goes, what you're also not doing is you're not problem solving everything for them. What you're doing is giving them the opportunities and some options in terms of what they can do to be able to make that work. So I hope that was really helpful. I know that for coaching, once I started rather than fixing things and being where I was the linchpin in every decision that got made in my business. And I started to coach my staff more. I started to help them become more independent. There were so many ripple effects. So one of the things that happened was I stopped being so uh, stressed all the time and feeling like I couldn't take any time off. I couldn't be a mom at times. I had to be available for my key people all the time, that they could ring me and I would be accessible all the time. As they started to get coached and started to get more um, confidence in that, they started to be able to um, be able to make a lot more decisions than I needed to have input into, which was great. The other thing is as their confidence build, they also start to see the ripple effect of that into others. And as I shared with them the coaching model on what I was doing, they were also, as our business grew, were also able to apply the same tools and skills to some of our team that sat underneath them. So, you know, there was a cascade effect and a, and a benefit that happened by, as a business owner, when you start to do that. The other is that you're not repeating the same information over and over again. You say, you know, things like, well, we kind of went through this a couple of months ago. So, you know, what's changed since then? And keep reminding them of um, within their boundaries and jurisdiction to be able to make the decisions they need to be able to make rather than almost bothering you with all of the decision making. The other thing happens is that you also end up forming a much deeper relationship with your team members as a result, because they can see that you're trying to help them. They're seeing that you're having a process. Mm -hmm. They're seeing that you're actually getting them to come up with it. And there's more buy-in by the person, that, that the employee that you're coaching, because they've actually come up with the ideas. You haven't just said to them, you are going to go and do this. You are actually coming up with solutions and options, maybe even for bigger problems, looking at some of the pros and cons of those options, and then making a decision and moving that forward. Um, I'm going to talk about this in many more other podcast episodes. We're also going to have some guests that are going to be speaking about this in the future as well. But it is such an important tool as a business owner to be able to learn how to coach, whether they're your face-to-face -face staff, your virtual staff, your suppliers, and um, not that I say this to my husband and my kids, but absolutely in your family as well. It becomes a really important skill to be able to do that. I hope you got one or two key tips out of it. Would always so appreciate you taking the time to subscribe and would really, really appreciate if you could take 20 to 30 seconds to rate this podcast on Apple. And uh, that helps us reach uh, more of our audience and um, really appreciate you for listening in. Thanks. I'm Shivani Gupta and you've been listening to the Grow Your Business podcast. 
hope you got one idea that you can think about or perhaps even implement straight away in your business. Thank you for listening. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn under Ash Shivani. Remember, I call it Ash Shivani, so please send me your questions that I can address in this podcast for you. And I would also so appreciate if you went to the Apple Podcast to rate and review this podcast. 